All right, we're going to continue on with the oval here. I got this fender just set on here. I'm just going to do a little bit of this with this uh, kind of semi soft sponge. Look for any low spots and then get some filler on those. This is epoxy primer, so it doesn't sand very good. It's all right. It's been on here a while, so once I get all that done, then I'll get some filler on there, and then I'm going to start on this corner. And I think this one here, I might end up working a little smarter on the other one. I caught the rust a little too late. Otherwise, I would have just made it go all the way down and done that whole area. But I think this one here is obviously rotten up to about here. So maybe I'll just replace more of it. I'm just going to cut out a little section here and then we'll see how bad that is and, you know, go from there. All right, so that's what that looks like after all that. There's a lot of that, all the filler I put on there. It should be pretty good just one more time after this. Once I get, I'm going to prime this and maybe I'll work on that at the same time. And then uh, I'll, I'm going to epoxy prime it one more time. And then I'm going to put some more of this particular primer on it. I think I have a bunch of that right now. And now let's look over here what the issue is here. I just kind of opened this up to look and this sill plate up to about right up here somewhere is bad. So, hmm, kind of this one I might say, I'm definitely going to replace what's here. I'm thinking I might just buy the sill plate I'm thinking about it right now. But, you know, the downside is they're made by Clocker Home, which is kind of the cheaper metal, but um, it is formed correctly, so I can at least let's just cut the rest of this away. I think what I'm gonna do is definitely this is all gonna have to come out up to here. You can see that, so it's gonna have to come out up to at least right here. But I'm not gonna take off the whole corner all the way up. There's no point in that. I'm just gonna go up to here somewhere. I'm going to come all the way down and just take this all off and then figure out what to do. I, I think what I'll do is probably just put a little L piece on here and fix that, the inner part of the heater channel. See how bad it is. I'm going to take off, cut right along there. Let's mark it. Let's learn from the last time I had the other side. I think I'll just go across like this, right? And then I got to cut it underneath here because I don't want to go through two layers like I did on the other side, remember? And then I'll go this way and go up to about right past my bad spot because I know it's bad to here right here, but it's probably bad to right here. So I'll go past my bad spot, cut through right here, and take all that off up to the sill plate. Remove the, go underneath and do the same all the way across there. And then we'll just take a quick look.
All right, so this sill plate underneath here is pretty bad. Uh, I'm not sure, about up to where, like right in here somewhere. And then in the front, it's pretty bad. I don't know how far back it is up here. So, hmm. So what I need to do is I'm going to have to do one of two. I'm going to have to cut this out. Take a look in there before I get too far along and either replace the whole thing or cut sections out of it and replace it. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. So I bought a new sill plate. A couple of things you can do is you can lay them on your heater channel or on your pan to make sure they're close. They're not going to be exactly perfectly right. And they're made by clock or home. And that stuff is. Uh, and you know there's always made for wiggle room that you see how big that hole is see how small that is there's actually the only thing on Volkswagen's they made with wiggle room is pan to body so yeah you might have to wallow out a little hole a little bit here and there but that is normal if you think you shouldn't have to do that then you probably shouldn't be doing a Volkswagen but I've checked this out pretty good and it fits it fairly good it seems like it would it'll bolt up and if you ever do one of these entire sill plates, don't overthink it. <laughs> That's where you go wrong. Because everybody sits there and goes, well, what if I had it too far this way or that way? Just make it line up. If it lines up, it's going to be close. It'll probably just bolt right up. I've never had one that didn't. So that's the way I do it. I just, all I do is I make sure it's lined up in the front and lined up in the middle and lined up in the back. And that's it. If it's on those things, it'll usually be just fine. Same thing with heater channels. Guys sit there and they think, oh, what if I have it too far forward? Or Just listen. Just make sure it fits. If it fits here, there, there, you're going to probably have no problem bolting the heater, bolting the body of the pan. I was telling my buddy CT that. I said, just put it on. You'll probably be fine. The pan halves, same thing. Usually just put them on, they usually line up, no problem. Just as long as you, you know, don't do anything crazy. And it usually will just line up. We'll be doing that later. Because that's what's in this box right here. The pan half for that when we get to the pan. So again, what I do is I look at how this lines up here. With the back there, I make sure that the holes match. When I have it lined up with the back edge of this. And then I put the front edge here, and I look at how much overlap there is. And you can see that. I look at how much overlap there is, how far that's overlapped. And then I kind of go, okay, let's look here. Then I check all the bolt holes along there. And I'm noticing that I need to put this thing a little bit more forward than it lines up. Then it will line up. So when I put it on, I'm just going to put it a little bit more forward, just a little bit. What's that? An eighth of an inch or something. And if I mess up, I'll just elongate the holes and be done with it. And you're talking about an eighth of an inch. It's not going to matter. When that body's bolted to the pan, it's going to be fine. All right, we'll check this out. I don't know how I got off a quarter of an inch, but somehow I did. So I put this up here. This line lines up. And when this is lined up right, this is lined up right. And hey, you guys, stay still for a second. Hang on, stay still. Quit moving around. So, <laughs> but when I check it, I just know that this is 16 inches, these 
or 16 inches apart. I'm gonna check the other side. Yeah, that's hard to do. And I go to 16 inches here. That line lines up. So you can see that lines up right at 16 inches on center. That lines in the right place. And look how far off it is. That's more like half an inch. I don't know. So anyway, I think I really don't know how I forgot that far off. Pretty much amazes me. But it happens. Maybe it's because this was lapped over. Yeah. I don't know. Forgot to add something in there. It happens. So what you do here is you just uh, take a chunk. Try and cut a straight line next to that one. And then just start over. Weld it on there. So you fix that. Oh well. That's the way it goes sometimes. Well, I guess I'll just continue back here a little bit more. Now I open this up and I really don't see where the end to that's going to be. It's going to be... Let's see. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of ugly stuff there. So, I'm going to cut this out more. Uh, probably have to use a plasma cutter and I don't really want to do that with the garage door shut. A lot of smoke comes from that. But back here, where this is, uh, let's look back here, is uh, this piece, and I need to make it basically the same shape as this. It continues all the way to the back, and the inside of that is gone. I cut it away. It was pretty rusted out, so I've got to make that part of it. It's really not worth replacing the whole heater channel. I would have to get the ones from uh, Classic Fab, and they're I think 300 bucks a piece. So, you know, I can fix this pretty well for quite a bit less and a lot, a lot less work than trying to cut these out. They're not, they don't really take that long. It's actually really easy to change heater channels, but they don't have a. I'd rather have the original metal, really. So. I think it's cool, you know, the old, look at those old gas welds right there. It's just like, yeah, that's just cool stuff. So I like to leave it there. And then uh, I'll just uh, patch this up. It's underneath where the seat is. You can't really see it from anywhere. I'm just going to, so I've made this piece here and I'll just, uh, i got to bend this more of an angle because if you look here, it's round and then it, goes around so what I'll do is I'll find a pipe or something um, something and I can bend this around it or I can put it in the sheet metal roller uh, the sheet metal roller kind of works um, I will roll that over but I need to bend this more of an angle All right, this lower doesn't work very good, but I got this piece of angle aluminum. I have, I have some steel would be better, or a piece of pipe that's cut in half. And all I'm going to try to do, let's see if it works, is just hit along here and put this, okay, and see if it kind of bends it to a round, use that, it'll kind of, Make it form in a circle a little bit. I'll let you guys check that out and see what happens. All right, so you do want the good news first or the bad news? Well, let's do the good news. The good news is this side doesn't have any rust holes in the front. 
The bad news is this side does and it is rusty right from here. I can probably fix what's here on the front, of course, and that, but the whole bottom plate of this of the heater channel is gonna have to be replaced. It's it's you know it's marginally thin and I got the whole thing because it was one of these clocker home deals. And you know that's all they have for these. And when you get one of these, if you ever do one, if you ever do a heater channel and you use the clocker home ones, even if you do the other ones, maybe if you can weld all these up again. So I always double weld them because <laughs> I've had them. I go to tighten them up, and all of a sudden I hear this click, and then it's spinning. Yeah, brand new part that does that. So always double weld them. So anyway, I'm gonna double weld, paint all this, get that crap primer they have on there. That's just basically packing primer, sand all that off, and uh, paint this side. Sand this off maybe and prime this side with epoxy primer, just so it's not gonna rust. And then, well, I don't know. Maybe I won't prime this till after it's in because I want it bare metal. I might use the pinch welder to put this on. Just pinch it. But this whole bottom sill plate needs to come off. And then I can get up here and I'll just treat all this, the underneath, and get all that so it's fresh. That wasn't, this side wasn't nearly that bad. It was a, it was only just the very end of it and I did treat the rust up as far as I could reach which is probably fine because it didn't have the leak in the front it's probably leaking in the front and pushing water all the way back going down the road you know the water goes this way so probably did that and then coagulated all the water in the very end because you know, these are very crudely built these did not have the separate heat channel inside it just had just the heater channels were just a big open area in these early cars so yeah we got that problem it's going to take a little while to do thinking about uh you know this would be when you, a rotisserie would really come in nice and handy uh, but i don't have one and i don't want to go buy one or build one just for this and then i got to store it and everybody goes well just do a rotisserie it's like yeah then you got to put it somewhere where are you going to put it you know you got to restore got to store the thing and keep it here for the next project or whatever and it's just you know it doesn't go well but i'm thinking about maybe sliding the body over as far as i can this way and maybe put another bar on there and just kind of make some props so it's kind of up at an angle so I get under there i don't know so I gotta figure that out. But anyway, that's the problem I'm running into right now. And it's a time consuming one. Because that bottom piece it takes a while to get off. It's removing it, I think, is the hardest part. Putting it on, all you need to do is clamp it in place and then drill through, either drill here and spot weld from the top, which isn't hard to do, or uh, just use the clean up the top, middle, bottom and just use the pincher which isn't that hard to do that's actually pretty easy so that can be done pretty easily so but you know getting the old one off is always the hard part on that there you go look at this this is a piece from under there well, it's, you know it's pretty heavily pitted yeah you bend it and it kind of almost cracks through the surface I mean, so that's I don't know I'd rather just replace it since I got the whole thing it's easier actually it's just harder to get the old one off all right so we got epoxy on here epoxy on here and this Dargon thing fell off this thing after I did all that body work on it got a couple bad spots in it now so that's what happens sometimes and we got the epoxy on the inside of this so that it's all nice and waterproofed up. 
And I weld that thing on. Well, here goes nothing. I don't know if you guys can even see. But it's just surface rust up in here. The bottom was rot. And then there's like right from right over here to over the front. I'll just put a little L piece in there. And save this heater channel. It's it's marginal. I mean I could replace it, but you know, I kinda like them being original. That's to me it's kinda cool. So if I can piece them together a little bit and save them never gonna see it anywhere and I gotta fix this corner now cuz I gotta do all this at the same time I gotta do this under piece and this all at the same time now this quarter so I gotta clean that up there it's kind of pitted up in there but it'll be all right I think and then uh, just gonna clean up the bottoms and leave the two layers of metal there. Got the smokies going on in there, don't I? I'll smell a little something. Probably the insulation in there burning inside here. Oh yeah. It's hot. Let's stick the water in there real quick. Solve that problem. Uh oh. It's snowballing. So to cut that little guy out. If, yeah, I mean, if I was to do the whole heater channel, I'd want to cut it right there, then I have to graph a piece in there. Uh, so that's a little more work, you know, than just replacing this section. It seems like a lot, but it's kind of, I don't know, it's on the fence on this, but the parts more so that's one thing but uh, yeah it's a, a little bit extra work here got to do this corner I got to fix this thing here before I can put that in there so I go cut that out something like this here just yeah. all right how about it all right, real quick, I always check it for the straight edge for the repair piece. Make sure that's right. I've done that. I got it clamped in. I've got all this stuff treated underneath here. 
it's going to get painted inside where they don't do that if you buy a new heater channel it's not painted in there guys you buy a brand new one the outside's painted inside's raw so i'll just get this paint this uh welded in real quick and i'll bring you back in all right so i got this piece welded in it looks kind of crappy under here but i'm gonna spray some primer up in the cracks and whatever i can get it i'm gonna put a little piece right here now i'm gonna put this piece on so i'll start fitting those all right i got this piece welded in there a little filler piece there i got this thing clamped on here so i can get the right angle for this so it's a lot easier with this thing car tilted up it really isn't that hard it looks a lot harder than it is once you get the car tilted up like this it's just no problem and I got this made I use the shrinker right here and then that makes it bend so and then I need to make sure that the height is straight going across here so I got to clamp on something on there before I weld that in All right, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up on this. Um, yeah, I'll tell you, if you notice here, I've got this thing. That looks pretty good. And it's pretty strong. There's, there's a lot of metal left in the middle here. This section is really pretty good shape. Um, the ends, I guess, water kind of pooled down here, over here, and up there. So... It, you know, if it was an early, if it was a later model, let's say it was like a, a 70 or something like that, I probably would have used one of the clocker homes, you know, and just replaced it. But because this is an early car, I really like the original heater channels and to get the other ones, it's like pretty expensive, you know, 350 bucks, I think now, 325 plus shipping, you know, so you add that up when it comes from Columbia, you know, how much is that for the whole heater channel? And it's not just the, that's not just the only issue. I kind of like it being original metal because, you know, you can see those old welds and stuff like that. And I don't know how much different, like, this is going to be, you know, it might be a little different looking. So, anyway, that's what I figure. And I have to do a lot of chopping up. It's like I got to cut up here, I got to cut over there, you know, a lot of places I don't really want to make ugly these areas in the front here and in the back corner, you can never really see it. Um, you'll never be able to get see what I did here. It's actually all underneath here. Um, they're all spot welds all the way along. So if you look along here, you'll see the spot welds. Um, and I just did spot welds all the way along the edge. And what that does is it, that's all you need to do, really. It's just lapped with spot welds. I got spot welds along the bottom edge and then I spot welded up 
as well. So it's double thick metal. Uh, and then all the rust is treated. So once I put those plates on, it's going to be, you know, this bottom plate. And I reinforce that with those welding up those things. And that's like an 18 gauge thick piece. So it's, it's pretty good. I mean, even though it's clocker home, it's kind of crappy made, but it's pretty thick. So. It'll probably last a really long time, you know, as much as anything will. You know, nothing lasts forever. I've always told you guys that if somebody's new. Um, nothing lasts forever. Lead doesn't last forever. The guy was telling me, hey, man, you know, you should have used lead on that thing again. <laughs> it's like, dude, I've been there and done that already. And lead does shrink. It does crack. It does everything filler does, you know. And I don't even know if it's any longer that you get out of it. It's just, you know, it's, and it's, it takes 10 times as long to actually make it look straight, to file that stuff off. Oh, it's just, it's awful, you know. So, nah, I'm not going back to doing stuff the long and hard way, you know, for what, you know. It really, there's no benefit. In my opinion, there's no benefit for it. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of ways to do metal work. There's a lot of ways to do body work. There's a lot of ways to do painting. And there's some that are completely wrong, but there's a lot of ways that are all right. And it just depends on everything. You know, depends on, you know if you if you want to go have it all done really perfect, you give a guy the $125 an hour and the, the budget's unlimited and you just keep going until, okay, I'm done. And then you look at the bill and you go, holy crap, it cost me 120 grand to fix this car. You know, okay, we're not going there. We're not doing that. We're not, you know, I'm not teaching that on YouTube. You know, I, I, I watched YouTube and I saw all this stuff and I'm like, what the hell is the world going to? You know, all these guys are going to buy project cars and they're going to go home and they're going to find out that's really hard to do what that guy's doing. And this isn't the, the oh, watch me do it because I could never do it. This is watch me because I can do what you can do. You know, that's what this the, my videos are about is to learn how to do what I do, which works and lasts. And you can do your own car and it's affordable. You know, it's the, it's the middle ground way to do stuff. And it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. The results are really good. It lasts a long time. You know, this is the way a lot of guys did this stuff for years. They did, you know, a lot of people did lap weld and spot welds and, and filler and tap, you know, lap, tap and, and fill. And that's why it was done for a long time because you know, you barely had a flex core welder that was kind of a new thing in the 80s. And all you could really do is spot weld with it. And so guys did that and it worked. And, and, and the reason that people got into this craziness is because somebody, I don't, you know, one thing happens and then all of a sudden everybody starts to follow that. They go, oh, well, I've used filler and it and, and got moisture in it and, and, and it, and it, and, and and it, it, you know, it retains moisture. I've taken off so much filler in my lifetime. And it's really rare that I see rust under the filler. And I think the only times that I ever see it is because some knucklehead ground it down, left it outside overnight, and then just put the filler over it. And that was it. So a lot of these things, I think, are, are farce. You know, I think it's like, a lot of these techniques and things that people have been teaching in these schools and teaching in these trade schools and all this stuff is is just a money maker, I guess. I, I don't know. It's just scared people to death, you know. And, and it doesn't need to be that way. It just doesn't, you know. I because I, I don't know. It just I get frustrated with it. That's why I started YouTube because I was like, you know, I, somebody's got to learn how to do this the old school way. And even the old guys that I know that are in their seventies now, they're like, man. I love what you're doing. Everybody needs to know this because I've seen the other stuff and I was the same thing. I was like frustrated because, you know, people, what happens is somebody buys a car, they start to do the project 
and then they start trying DIY. They find out it's too hard to do it that way. And then they, oh, well, let me just go to the metalwork guy. And they go to the metalwork guy and they go, 70 grand? And they go, oh. And then they end up chucking the car and it gets crushed. Not good for classics. So saving them is what it's all about. Whatever you can do to save it, however you want to do it, that's good for the car. That's good for that car will be there. And and if somebody else wants to take all the paint off that you put on it and take everything down and butt weld all the parts in perfectly and metal finish it after that, then it's still alive. It didn't just go to the graveyard and get, get crushed, you know? So that's the whole reason, you know, it's not wrong. It's just another way to do it. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Uh, Please like, share, and subscribe. Sorry I went on a little bit too long, but uh, I thought that was kind of necessary. Talk to you later.